y'all doing? Waiting on you. Well, if anybody in this country music world is worth waiting on, it is you. And I say that with all of the sincerity in my heart. You and I have talked countless times, and there is not a time, I'm going to get personal here, there's not a time that goes by that I don't see you, that we have this kindred moment of survivorship. Randy's cancer happened not too long after mine, after my husband's. Wow. Uh, and I think we ended up in a magazine. You know, your story and then our story was in the, the, you know, magazine as well. And every time I see you, I'm just going to say this in front of all these people because we're all family here and, you know, there's no heirs and no, no nothing. You just touch my heart because you always remember that. And you always come up to me and you always say, hi, survivor. Do you hear the to the doctors calls out that big C word? Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, I asked the doctor. I said, "Are you sure?" And he said, "I am absolutely sure." And from now on, I am the captain, and we're going to guide this ship. And we're not going to talk about having it. We're going to talk about we had it. Amen. So, And look at us both sitting here, and hopefully your family members or your parents or your whomever, hopefully not all of us get that card, right? Not all of us get that opportunity to live further, but, um, but, those, but we're here and we're grateful. And I, can I start off with um, saying this is, last year was kind of a tough year for you. Lots of hard things happen in your world. Yeah. How you feeling? How you doing? Well, uh, I guess I'm just thankful. I just had, uh, I'll share this with you. I had uh, my blood test. Everything came out a-okay. Yeah. Had a colonoscopy. That's good. Colonoscopy. Yeah. yeah. Everything came out good. Because everything came out. <laughs> but you know what? What my doctor told me, he said, it's so sad that so many men say, I'm okay. So they never really have the time. And uh, I had the procedure and... Uh, my wife wanted to have the procedure when I had it. Oh. Now that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Night it, before it, the Owen house was not fun, was it? It's a good thing we have several bathrooms. <laughs> 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 and uh, I went in for the checkup down in Birmingham at, with Dr. Egan and uh, when they did the stress test mm -hmm. they came back and they said told my wife said you came out really good then he stopped and looked at me and he said we're going to have to talk I could have fell on the floor because I came through this I thought I was feeling so good and so I said well what about he said well we saw something in your heart that needs to be looked at I said, well, can we do it today? He said, no, because I'm going to wait till in the morning, if it's okay with you, and we'll get the A team. So I went back home, didn't sleep any that night, mm. came back to Birmingham, and uh, did the arteriogram. They did it through my arm. Mm. How many people have had an arteriogram? Anyway, now then, they, they came through my arm, and Dr. Egan uh, said that he had the best doctor there. Well, I'm laying there watching this guy do the stuff, and I feel this thing right here, and he's like, 
I said, are you in my heart now? He said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm in there. So the good news was, is what they had seen was like my rib cage was slightly shading on my heart, so everything came out good. So. So he said, whatever you've been doing, keep on doing it. <laughs> so that's just, that's our health report. We'll see y'all next year. How are you, Teddy, and Team Alabama doing after such a tragic loss? I, it broke my heart for you all, Jeff, and leaving this world and the struggles and thank God we had him as long as we did after his diagnosis but how are y'all doing after everything well it's it's like it's something really that closer than a brother really yeah. because for 50 years uh, over 50 years how me and Teddy we decided to go see Jeff Cook one Sunday afternoon because we had learned that he had all kind of equipment bass guitar, rhythm guitars, amplifiers, all kind of stuff. How old were y'all? Well, 18. <laughs> 19, that's 18. So we got uh, to uh, Jeff's little house that he had just started building. And Jeff had an incredible job with the U.S. government working on missiles. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a genius, and uh, was a genius in electronics. So, uh, I had written a song called Jeannie Brown. And it was about my little situation with my little girlfriend, and uh, didn't work out. <laughs> so, told Jeff about it and got a guitar and Teddy got the bass. Just us three there in Jeff's little room and he had, of course, he had all kind of recording equipment. And uh, so, is the boat moving now? <laughs> want to make sure. <laughs> I don't need anything. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do. I need to uh, be more confident, I guess. But So anyway, uh, Jeff said, well, why don't you play that song you wrote? So I played it, and he and Teddy immediately started singing their part harmony. And Jeff played the guitar on it and recorded it. And so that started like, as soon as Jeff is like, had been in all kind of bands. He was like the band leader of all kind of rock and roll bands. And Teddy had been in all kind of bands, but I'd never been in a band. I wanted, I was more of a country music person. And uh, that kind of music didn't appeal to me as much as it did to Jeff and Teddy. But anyway, uh, we sang that day and so made just started in evolve and and so that's how we got started in 69. And if I could the thing with Jeff is he absolutely lived to play music. He loved to play music. And if you've seen some of the early shows, he played piano, he played, he started playing fiddle. Not very good. <laughs> but he learned really quickly. And so I had loved, of course, loved Charlie Daniels when we was working for Tips, and uh, Charlie made the fiddle cool. And he's one, he turned out to be one of our very, very best friends in the whole wide world. Y'all give Charlie Daniels a round of applause. So, having heard all that, I thought, I'm going to write a song that Jeff can play fiddle on. So I wrote Tennessee River. You can applaud for that if you like. Uh, 
So anyway, Jeff played the fiddle. The first few times we played it, we was playing at a club called Chiefs in Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> So, Jeff is so excited, I'm so excited, Teddy's so excited, the people playing with us, I don't remember who was playing drums at that time, but anyway, we started playing Tennessee River, very much like what the record is. So, this, we're playing it and this girl walks up to the stage. <laughs> She looks at Jeff because he's got the fiddle. And Jeff's all fired up and she's like, where did that song come from? And Jeff said, that's the song that Randy wrote. Do you like it? She said, that's the worst damn song I've ever heard. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't listen to it. But that got us, you know, that was our first number one record and we still didn't believe it. So we stayed at the Bowery in Myrtle Beach and worked for tips to July the 12th, 1980. We already, we were going to have a number one single before we left. And then we went from being there until going out and doing shows like you folks are familiar with. So it's been, Amazing journey to then I'm very grateful the people here on the ship saw fit to have me here because it's very emotional for me to be here and you know all the things that's happened this year uh, losing my mom on June the second and didn't know that was coming. I knew Jeff's fate was imminent, but to have both of those happen in, in one year. And still to carry on the music and still have people care about what you do and what you've done, I want to thank y'all very much. boat and I can imagine the emotions that you feel though I don't know them but I on behalf of everybody in this room we love you and our sincere condolences because I know going to your the Alabama Museum if, has anybody been there oh yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Great. you, you got to go down to Fort Payne my husband and I did a motorcycle travel show and Tony um, Alabama's manager was you kind came of, on a motorcycle we did we yeah. did and you all a motorcycle girl <laughs> The guys came up and and was there were there for our taping and you know talking about being a coup a feather in our caps to for the Alabama guys to show up and give us a, a personalized tour and Randy's section we asked them to think about their favorite area of the museum and Randy took us straight to his family and I knew though I've never didn't have the pleasure to meet your mama I've met your your children before and your wife but. I knew just from how you talked, Randy, pointing to those pictures on the wall, your mama meant the world to you. She was an amazing piano player. Wow, I didn't know and that. And when I was starting out uh, four or five years old, we couldn't afford a piano. So eventually, I think we give $25 for an old piano. And mama started playing piano again. And she got pretty popular. She and Daddy and my sisters, they go sing at the little small churches. Mm. And then she got where that, uh, you know, there was people calling. We actually got a telephone later on. <laughs> How many people ever saw or heard of an eight-party line? On my grandma Owen, and you could hear her breathing and chewing her chewing gum. And every 
once in a while my papa's name was Ernest, you'd hear her say, Ernest, turn them beans down. down <laughs> I knew who it was then. <laughs> but how blessed I was to have a great set of grandparents. They uh, lived together 65 plus years. Papa and Grandma Tig uh, passed away. They were 93 and 91. They got married uh, at Edna Hill United Methodist Church because Little River was flooded. And they couldn't get back to Cherokee County. So they arranged, they were in a hurry. <laughs> Horny. That church still stands, and uh, it's old. And but then my papa and grandma Owen, they were married when they were 16. They were born in 1886, and papa was basically an orphan. My my grandma was part of the Ba family, B A U G H, and they got together and. A year or so later, the first of 12 children was born. <laughs> I heard somebody say, oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's enough talk, man. When you toured me around in your section of the museum, you pointed to a picture of you as a little boy. Describe the shirt that you had on that we were talking about backstage. <laughs> you don't have to answer. Not at all. I tell you what, there's only been two times in my career um, in this business that I wept. I mean, I, I hurt when people pass away in our business because we've all gotten to know them so well, but when Charlie Daniels passed away, my soul was crushed. When Jeff Cook passed away, that was another tear time. And <clears throat> I'll try to tell it. Uh, now that shirt was several of the shirts that my mother made for me. And she also made shirts for Daddy. And they were made out of uh, fertilizer sacks. We called them guanner sacks. And actually what it was was guano, which is bat poop. True story. Now that one, I'm sorry, I just... All the stuff that Mama did, uh, she she cooked. I never seen anybody that could cook as quick as she could. Work in the field. Come back in and she say, "Randy, you get that fire going in that wood stove, because I got to cook supper for you, Daddy, and all y'all." And she did. And at her service, her memorial, it was so incredible that my oldest daughter, Allison, had taped a lot of her stories. And one of Mama's philosophies was, if you're going to do it, do it. <laughs> Don't sit around and mess around. If you're going to do it, get it done, do it. And she lived by that. <laughs> And she could flat play piano. She uh, she sang the low part. And all I ever heard my grandparents on her side of the family do was sing gospel music. They sang uh, Papa Tig. He is an expert 
Mama, she uh, taught singing schools at, at the old churches, and that's how she and Daddy met. She and Daddy met because uh, he was plowing a mule outside the church window. <laughs> and the mule had gas. <laughs> oh, that's what she said. <laughs> And she said he was plowing that mule, and uh, she said, I looked at him and said, he was a good-looking fella. So they rocked on. They would go to services together, and uh, Daddy went over to talk to my Papa Tig about letting him marry that 15-year-old girl. And Papa said, okay. So then he asked Grandma Tig, and she did her usual, why, of course. <laughs> so the one thing that happened with my, my daddy is in 1980, much too early, he passed away. Just as my career was taken off, and I never got to enjoy it, really, because I was crying on the inside. And it was really difficult. As so many people say, uh, you know, I know your daddy and your mama want you to go ahead, but, you know, the reason why I had to work with it all to go ahead was because of Jeff and Teddy. I didn't want to let them down because we really worked work very hard. And I don't know why I'm so nervous talking to y'all. And you gotta start you start touching on nerves that I have to I'm an emotional person. I am too. I am too. Are you okay? You're not upset with me, are you? <laughs> How could I be upset with it? <laughs> Sorry if, if if we did touch or if I did touch on some nerves. I just They gave me water, they didn't bring a napkin out here. <laughs> it's just kind of a group hug, you know? Because life is hard for all of us on You folks levels. don't realize what somebody like myself that spent over fifty years trying to accomplish something. Oh, look at that. Oh. Be careful. Uh, I know. <laughs> Uh, you're talking about 2020. I was, I'll tell this, I'm going to try to do that song. I wrote a song. And I was watching a report on the weather, and it's about this guy was being interviewed, and it looked like the guy that was interviewing him was not as interested in the damage that had been done with the hurricane as probably just trying to get in the news story. and So I got to thinking about it. If that guy had a microphone, and he had a guitar, and he could write songs, what he might say. So the lines of the song starts off, well, he sat there just thinking, and I thought what he might say. He said, man, I'm here to tell you, it's been one of those days. Yeah, I've lost a whole lot, but I thank God for what's left. Mm -hmm. And while I'm picking up the pieces, I'm wondering what else. Yeah, this has been the worst year that there's ever been. And I don't want to see 
2020 again. So a couple of my songwriter buddies, I told them about it, and they said, do you realize that play on words? I never thought about 2020 being perfect vision. You see what I mean? So that one came down. So I hope I get to do that for y'all. And I hope you enjoy it. It's... If I'm a guitar, I'd play it for you. Well, he sat there just thinking, thought what he might say. He said, man, I'm here to tell you, it's been one of those days. Yeah, I've lost a whole lot, but I thank God for what's left. While I'm picking up the pieces, I'm wondering what else. Yeah, this has been the worst year that there's ever been. And I don't want to see 2020 again. He said, yeah, I lost my sweetheart. And it was on her birthday. Yeah, that old virus took her away. But I wish that somehow it was me instead of her. She was like a candle that lit up the earth. Yeah, this has been the worst year that there's ever been. But I don't want to see 2020 again. I was hoping for sunshine, and we got hurricanes. I was praying for cures, but I saw pain. He said, them folks on the big news, well, they don't care for me at all. They keep our heads underwater. And all for us strong. There's a whole lot of half truths, and there's two sides too. Hey, I quit watching the six o'clock blues. <laughs> yeah, this has been the worst year. That there's ever been But I don't want to see 2020 again But I hope we'll come together And pray like old friends Like we did before 2020 began Yeah, I hope I've got some good years to live before the end. But 
I don't want to see 2020 again. room, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all be thinking of it. If you have some questions for Randy, we'll wrap up here in just a little bit, but we might take some questions if Randy's up for it. somebody would record it and so they told me they said that's a pretty good song but it needs a bridge and I said what is a bridge <laughs> and they said well it's you change the mood of the song I was like well I don't want to change the mood of the song but anyway I appreciate you saying that that song has meant the world. If you ever get a chance to come to where I live and my home on Lookout Mountain, that, that's across the gate, feels so right. I'll tell you a story about that one too. Uh, Conway Twitty called me. Give Conway a round of applause. Y'all. And I can't really do it, but he's like, is this Randy? <laughs> yes, it is. And he's like, Conway Twitty here. And he said, uh, did you write that song called Lady Down on Love? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He said, I like that song. What are you going to do with it? And I said, that's going to be Alabama's next single. <laughs> He said, oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> of 
because I was going to record it. So I lost my opportunity to get a great cut by the great legendary Conway Twitty. Y'all did a great job. It's okay. So anyway, as before, I don't remember all the things we said because I was so excited and devastated at the same time because there's nothing I could do about Lady Down on Love coming out. There's Conway wanting to sing it. And he said, oh, I like that other song you wrote too called, Ooh, mm, Feels So Good. <laughs> And uh, I didn't want to correct him, and finally I said, uh, well, it's called Feel So Right. He said, oh, yeah, I know it's something about feeling something. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Somebody right over here had a question. Randy from Fort Payne, Alabama. Woo-hoo! Yay! Uh, question. Oh, you mentioned Feel So Right. Is it breathe words upon my skin or three words upon my skin? Great question. I don't don't read anything that you have written anywhere because I wrote it. It's called "Breathe," three words upon my skin, which is "I love you." That's the way I meant it to mean. Is the three words were "I love you." And back there in the back. What? I hate to have to end this. There was one you, lady. You wanted, okay, go for it. What was the, I saw somebody had their hand. Up in the back? Does somebody have your hand up in the back? Okay, one more. Randy, we love you, buddy. Appreciate everything you've done all through the years. You built some hearts along the way. And uh, boy, I tell you what, I love listening to you going home at night. Late. And uh, everybody come to me to splice their tapes back on eight track sets and everything else. And we get hung up, they're like, hey, can you fix this one? And I said, if it's an Alabama tape, I'll fix it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well said. I think we all love him, don't we? Let's give Randy Owen another round of applause.